Welcome to this video. We are going to learn about sound. If you say hi, then that sound travels across the room to your friend, and she hears you. So what's happening? First, sound is a wave. It travels through the air between you. That means air is a physical medium. The particles of air bump into each other just like a slinky. Let's watch a simulation. Here's a simulation. I'm going to pretend this is something really cool, and I'm not that far off. Let's pretend this is your throat, the inside of your throat. Over here, this gray bar is the voice box, and inside your throat, there's all of this air. When you talk, your voice box vibrates like this. When that voice box, vibra voice box vibrates, it bumps into the air particles inside of your throat. And then that first set of air particles bumps into the next set of air particles, which bumps into the next. And so you produce this compression, which is then sent throughout the air in your throat. And eventually, that compression reaches the air in the room. And then it reaches the air inside your friend's ear, and they hear you. Pretty cool. So. What type of wave is this? The answer is longitudinal. Which way are the particles oscillating? They're oscillating left and right. See that? Or maybe they're actually going up and down. Maybe we've turned, right? Your voice box, your throat goes up and down. But let's just pretend it's left and right. Which way does the energy propagate? To the right, because that's where the compressions are moving. And particle oscillations, left, right, are parallel to the energy propagation, which is to the right. Because those two things are parallel, that makes this a longitudinal wave. So we've learned that sound waves are longitudinal. We've also seen that we can use dots to represent the wave shape. Each dot is a particle of air, but there's another way we can draw sound waves. Instead of doing dots, we can just use shading what do you think? Should this be darker or lighter? Should the rarefaction be darker or lighter? Here's how we do it. When the particles are really dense at a compression, the picture is darker. And when the particles are, uh, when there's a rarefaction, when they're spread out, we make the shading lighter. Okay, now if you, if you talk really loudly, then your voice box is really bumping into those particles good and hard. And if you talk more quietly, then you're not hitting those particles so hard. In which case does the sound go faster? Hmm. What do you think? Does sound go faster the louder you talk? Believe it or not, all waves go at the same speed in a particular medium. So it doesn't matter how hard you hit those particles with your voice box, they will go at the same speed. Now, what, what is that speed, then? You're probably wondering, how fast does sound go through air? Well, sound waves travel through normal air at about 343 meters per second. What makes it normal? Hmm. That means that the air is not really, it's not really humid. There's not a lot of uh, water in the air. The temperature is normal temperature, and the pressure is normal. So you're probably wondering, well, what makes air not normal? Well. You just have to change one of these things, temperature, pressure. So what do you think? Would cold air constitute a different medium from normal air? The answer is yes, because you've changed one of the conditions. So what's going on here? How does air know to travel at this speed when it's normal temperature and so forth? How do the waves know? To very briefly answer that question, we're going to turn to our example of the string. Now, this string has some amount of tension. Here's how you think about that. When you stretch a rubber band really, really far, you increase the tension. So I can change the tension of this rope from low to high. Watch what happens when the tension is low. There's my wave, and it kind of just goes on through. I'll send another one through, and then I'll raise the tension. So now I'm going to increase the tension. Whoa! What just happened? I increase the tension, and the wave goes faster. 
Now, wave speed depends on something very important. It depends on how the particles interact with each other. When I increase the tension, I change how quickly they respond to each other. When you increase the temperature of air, you change how quickly the particles respond to each other because they're going faster. So wave speed does not depend on frequency. It depends on how the particles interact. Now we already know that sound can go through air. It can also go through solids and liquids. And I wonder which one it goes fastest through. Hmm. Let's first consider an example of a liquid. Let's say you're underwater and your friend is over here. If you say hi, the sound travels from you to her and she hears. Now let's say you take a piece of string and you connect styrofoam cups to each end. If you say hi, then that produces a compression in the string. The string transmits the compression all the way over to here and your friend hears you. So in which case does sound travel fastest, do you think? Remember this, the more interactive the particles, the quicker the sound will travel. The answer is sound travels fastest through solids. And the reason is because in the, in the solids, particles are much closer and they even feel stronger forces. So when you bump particles of a solid, they interact much more quickly and that, trans, uh, that compression is transmitted more quickly. And in gases, sound travels slowest, typically. All right, humans interpret frequency as something called pitch. What is pitch? If I talk with a low pitch, it sounds like this. And if I talk with a high pitch, it's like this. Higher frequency sound waves have a higher pitch. Lower frequency sound waves have a lower pitch. But we can only hear certain frequencies. If the pitch, if the frequency rather, is below 20 hertz, we cannot hear it. If the frequency is above 20,000, we can't hear that either. Dogs might hear that though. Now, I'm going to show you an example of two different sounds being produced. These are tuning forks, we'll see what those are in class, but just think of them now as something that produces a single frequency sound. So this bottom tuning fork has a high frequency that it produces, the top tuning fork produces waves with a lower frequency. Okay, which frequency wave, which wave, will go faster? Hmm, it's both, they're both in the same air. Let's watch and see. The answer is obvious. They go at the same speed. Even though you have a higher frequency, you do not have a higher speed. Now, we earlier we drew sound waves like this, and that's not totally accurate. Waves don't look like this, sound waves, unless the wave, the air, is confined to a pipe or a column. In most cases, you're in the, you know, in a room, you're in an open room. So what about that? Hmm. Let's say here you are in the middle of the room, you have a megaphone, and you say, hi. Here's what happens. The wave, you are the source. The wave I will draw with a circle. The circle will represent the compressions that you produce. The sound wave, the compressions, travel out in all directions. So your voice carries to every part of the room. Sound waves go in all directions like a sphere. In fact, if you connect those compressions with a line, they would form a sphere. Now, if you say hi, uh, whoops, let's say instead of just saying hi, you sing a note and you keep the sound going. La. What does that mean? You continue producing compression after compression because the sound continues. So you, you do this, you do la, and what you send out are bunches of compressions. You have a first compression, and that compression expands. And while that compression expands, you make a new compression because the noise keeps going. Those two compressions spread out, and while they spread out, you keep singing, so you make a third compression. Those three compressions all spread out, but you keep singing, and so you produce a fourth.
and it looks like this.